So today's topic is PowerShell, trusted package management. Most of this will be in demo. I have like only a few PowerPoint slides, so luckily we won't be in PowerPoint very much. But what are we going to be talking about today? So overall, we're going to be talking about PowerShell Gallery best practices. So if you're going to be using the PowerShell Gallery today, I'm going to be covering how I would recommend you kind of view and use the PowerShell Gallery. It's a great tool, but there's some caveats, in my opinion, on how it could be best used. Um, and then we'll transition into sort of how you can use packages from the PowerShell Gallery in your private repository or just how you can use private repositories in general from your organization. And then I'll talk about what's coming soon, what's coming next in this trusted PowerShell package management space, because this is a big area of investment for the team. So with that, um, we'll just jump right into demos. So first, I want to talk about how to use the PowerShell gallery. So many of you, I'm hoping, are familiar with the PowerShell gallery. Here I pulled up this package, az.computer. Um, and here you can see a lot of the different metadata around the package, right? This looks like a package that's probably part of the AZ package. If we go to the project site, you can see that it links to this, the Microsoft Azure PowerShell module, all those sorts of things. See in the package details, it looks like it's part of the AZ package. Um, it's author is noted as Microsoft Corporation. It's got the Microsoft copyright. And the owner looks like it's Microsoft team. So if I was just giving a first glance at the package, I would feel pretty good about saying, hey, look, this looks like a Microsoft package. It looks like it's part of the AZ module. And so I could probably trust it. Um, but what I want you to know about this package is just actually how easy it is to spoof things today um, on the PowerShell gallery, um, which is probably you might think is kind of a funny thing to say as somebody who um, owns and works on the PowerShell gallery. But I think it's really important to build awareness around what it what an open repository is um, in an untrusted repository so we can talk about the best ways to use it. So what this module actually is, is a module that I just posted. Um, it has nothing to do with Microsoft in particular, really. Um, I posted it from my own personal Outlook account that I just spun up. Um, I just added all of this information to the PSD1. So what I did is if you go to the file list, PSD1, I just copied the PSD1 from um, the AZ module. So it had the right description, company name, all those sorts of things, project site. Um, so I just want to show you how easy it is to kind of get duped, right? Um, one thing to note, though, is this owner, right? Microsoft team. If we click on this, you'll see that this is the only package that this owner has ever published. And so that's kind of fishy, and it's by this. this. If we go to AZ Compute, which is actually part of the Azure PowerShell module, you'll notice this owner is Azure SDK. If we click on that, you'll see the whole um, AZ module is there. So that, that gives you a sign that it's it's a little bit more trustworthy. These are the actual AZ packages um, and that sort of thing. But the, the real point to this is just by looking at a module on the gallery, it's pretty hard to tell sometimes like what's legit and what's not. I will caveat, we do have scanning in place to check for things like this in the gallery. So um, you might be saying like, okay, this is really silly. Why don't you guys take this down? We will. We have um, some automated scanning in place that checks for things for like obvious spoofing, things like people claiming to be Microsoft or AZ, um, that sort of thing. Uh, but that being said, there is a lapse sometimes the scanning between when the scanning takes place and a package is published. Um, or maybe our scanning isn't perfect. Maybe something gets through the track cracks. Um, we do have malware scanning as well that we're continuing to invest in. Um, but malware is always being updated. And so there's always possibility that something gets um, through the cracks. So at the end of the day, the point that I want to drive home would be that the packages on this repository are community content and should be regarded as inherently trusted. What this means is that we hope and we make an effort to make sure that there is no malware on this site, that there's no spoofing attacks. 
Um, and we're continuing to invest in that process. But at the end of the day, one of the principles of security is that we always assume breach um, and that you take responsibility for what you put on your servers. So the way I would use the gallery is not to ever directly call the gallery, right? So what we do is we use the gallery as more of a site where you can explore packages, install them into um, a system or a sandbox environment where you can play around with packages, test them, verify them. Um, and then we can put them into our private repository. So that's what I would consider to sort of be a best practice to do. So if you're wondering, okay, great. So we know that we, it's hard to trust packages based, just based on, say, the copyright. What is one way we can actually look at packages to see um, a little bit better um, if they're trustworthy? So one way we can do this is by looking at signatures of a package. So if we take these two packages, for example, and we do... Um, this call, install PS resource on az.computer. That was the spoofed package, if you remember, on the PowerShell gallery. I'm just calling trust repository because for the sake of this, I, I don't need the check. I'm going to use this parameter, authenticode check, um, because authenticode check is a type of signature check on Windows um, to see if it has the right signature or if it's signed. So if I run this, it's going to do the call. And you'll see that it's going to return this arrow. The signature for AZ computer is not signed. So that's a good sign from me, at the very least, that AZ computer, not actually part of the AZ set, because it doesn't have the signature that I would have expected. That's not to say that a non-signed package is automatically not useful or not trustworthy. But in this case, because I expected it to be part of Microsoft, it's a little fishy that it's not signed, and it's definitely not part of the AZ package. On the other hand, if I ran this with same check with AZ Compute, um, it's going to just install for me because the signature is correct. Oh, this is a different kind of error due to my file system. So um, that's not a signature error. Okay, so once I have the packages on my system, if I want a little bit more information about the signature, so the, all that told me is whether it was signed or not. I can use this commandlet get authentic code signature to get more information about the signature to see if it's the signature that I would expect and one that I want. So the way I like to do this, if you want to know where a package is on your file system, you can do something like this, GMO or get module. I'll do az.compute list available. And then you can see where these are. So I'll CD to here. This is where my modules are. We'll go here. And then I can CD um, into my az.compute file. And then I'll go into this latest version because this is the one I want to check. Great. So then if I check the contents of this file, you can see all the files that are in my az.compute. And so now um, I can check the signature. So the signature is going to be on each file um, in this package. So you can run like a, a loop to check them. That's actually what the uh, what install PS resource is doing. Um, or you can just check on an individual file. So let's do get authentic code signature. We can run it on the PSD1 file, for example. And then I like to run it pipe it to FL or full list to get all the attributes. So what this is good to see is you can see um, the signer certificate and all this sort of information to get the full information about the certificate and the signing information. So it's exactly what I would expect from the az.compute module. So I'm feeling good about this. Whereas if we were to do this, let's go back a level, and then if we go into az.computer, right, um, I think I have 103, great. You can see the files there. If we run that get authentic code signature check on this one, it's going to tell me that it's not signed, that kind of information. So, Definitely recommend checking signatures on files that you get from the gallery to make sure that they're what, what you want as part of the vetting process before you put them into your private galleries. 
Um, one other thing to note. So this is the docs on Get Authentic Code Signature. I always like to show the doc pages because I know sessions can be a little bit fast paced or you might not remember all the details, but um, you can see this is in the reference docs for PowerShell. Um, one feature we also added to PS Resource Get in um, the latest preview was a new commandlet called Compress PS Resource. And so what this does is it takes in a file, a path to um, a module that hasn't been built yet, so to speak, um, and it creates a nutcake for you. And so you might be wondering, why would I want to do this? Um, the reason for this is that it allows you to sign the package as a whole before you publish it rather than signing each individual file. So this allows you to check whether or not the package itself has been manipulated rather than just each individual file. So I can show you just an example of how this command that works well, but definitely check out the documentation on this. So if we go back here, um, I have this PSD1 and I'm going to pack it into a nut keg using the compress PS resource commandlet. So I have my path to the folder where all the files are for this module. This is like what you would normally pass into publish PS resource. Um, so today, publish PS resource, you would typically put in this path and it's gonna build and publish, pack and publish your module. Um, so what we're doing is adding a, a commandlet if you just wanna pack your module so you can sign it before you publish. So let's run that. And then we can go check this path. And you can see that what it did is it gave me this nutcake. Now I can sign this whole nutcake. And then we added a new parameter set to publish PS resource. Nutcake path. So I could pass in that nutcake path now and publish the whole nutcake um, that's signed. So that's another way to use signing um, with your packages. All right, cool. Let me just check my notes to see where we're at with things. We well, cool. couldn't see the terminal if you were trying to share that. Oh, you couldn't? Just the last terminal? Right. Um, okay, I will, let me just show that again then. I'll just copy that over so you can see. It wasn't too exciting of a demo, I promise you didn't miss much, but um, I'll just show it in here. Thank you for that, Sean. Let's do this. That'll work. Um, I don't have the right version of PS Resource Get the latest preview loaded here, so that's why it's giving me this error. But this is the new commandlet um, that I did. I passed in compressed PS Resource. This path, um, which was the path to my folder for my module, the destination path, and then I use publish PS resource with the new parameter, that path. So that's all that I was showing, but 